For the last few weeks, Two on Your Side Investigates has been digging into the continuing crises facing the Catholic Diocese of Buffalo, from bankruptcy to the closing of churches. Now, part three of this continuing series, looking at whether the diocese has changed how it handles sexual abuse or whether it's just more of the same. Here's Channel 2 investigative reporter, Charlie Specht. Since I arrived here, I'm about accountability and transparency. When Bishop Michael Fisher announced a settlement in 2022 between the Diocese of Buffalo and State Attorney General Letitia James, he announced the hiring of attorney Melissa Potzler as the point person for the protection of children. But she will be directly responsible to me. Two years later, Potzler oversees a monitoring program for 20 priests and former priests the diocese says are abusers. And the diocese points to a recent audit that says it's in full compliance with its promises to protect children. But we dug deeper into that audit and found reasons to question its independence. And when we pushed for specifics, the diocese backed out of our interview with Potzler about the steps it's taking to monitor abusive priests and protect kids. The June audit was done by Kathleen McChesney, a former FBI official who left the Bureau in 2002 to work for the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, but whose independence has been questioned by survivors because of that relationship. Financial reports obtained by Two on Your Side show the diocese has paid McChesney more than $230,000 since January. And other spending reports show the diocese's longtime criminal defense firm, Connors LLP, which was criticized in the AG report, remains heavily involved in evaluating sex abuse cases. Two on your side legal analyst Barry Covert works for one of many law firms suing the diocese, but he is not actively involved in those cases. After Covert reviewed the audit and other documents we obtained, we asked him whether it seems the diocese has fundamentally changed the way it operates. As an institution, they, they don't seem to have. They've not been transparent. They're not telling the public what's going on. The AG mandated the diocese create its priest monitoring program after it subpoenaed church records revealing cases like Father Dennis Franzek, who the diocese allowed to minister in 2006, even though it knew of eight alleged incidents of sexually inappropriate behavior with young girls. And Father Art Smith, who former Bishop Richard Malone returned to ministry in 2012 after Smith groomed a minor something Malone in a deposition with the AG said was his biggest error as bishop. This is my mistake. It was the dumbest thing I've ever done as a bishop. The church says it has substantiated sex abuse allegations against the 20 men in the program, but they're not on any sex offender registry because many of the alleged crimes were never reported to police. According to the audit, 12 priests are complying with the program, but eight are not. When we asked the diocese for basic information about the men, like their names, Potzler backed out of the interview, with a spokesman citing, quote, legal questions and the need to confer with outside counsel. Once outside counsel got involved, the diocese went back to the same PR and legal strategy it used during Malone's era, saying it would not provide anyone for us to interview for the last two parts of our series, and releasing a two-page statement that sidestepped most of our questions. If they're backing out of interviews with you, Again, that's a negative sign. They should be open to all interviews, all press conferences, because what should they really have to hide? The statement did not provide the name of a single priest, including one priest identified only as Cleric C in the audit, who had four allegations against him and, quote, occasionally celebrated masses at various churches in the diocese. The diocese would only say the 20 priests being monitored are among the list of 87 priests with substantiated allegations on the diocese website. The statement also said communications between itself and the Vatican are, quote, confidential. Yes, legally, maybe you don't have to do certain things, but you are not an entity that is based upon legality. Your entity is based upon morals and religion and belief and doing the right thing in all instances, even when you maybe are not required to do that. Covert says it's another indication that six years after the sex abuse scandal erupted in Buffalo, the diocese is still a long way from earning back trust. Why did this happen? Why, why just as an institution did you allow this to happen? And why aren't you correcting it more transparently, more openly, and trying to really turn the page? That's really what I think everybody has been looking for, everyone's been demanding, and it just has not happened.
Now, we did give diocesan attorney Terry Connors a chance to sit down and discuss this in an interview. He declined our request, but we want to read you a statement from a spokesperson for the attorney general who said in part that that office does not have the authority to compel the diocese to denote which priests have failed to comply with that priest monitoring program, but those priests are no longer receiving their pensions. And you can read the diocese's full statement on our website, WGRZ.com. A final part of the series. What's coming up in that, Charlie? That's right. Part four, investigative reporter Sean Mickey will bring you uh, the final part of the series, which focuses on a legal battle for sex abuse records in state court and really the toll that this bankruptcy mm -hmm. has taken on the survivors of abuse that's coming up Wednesday at 6 p.m. Quite a toll, I would imagine. All right, we'll be looking for that, Charlie. Thank you.